Mr. President, it's a pleasure to welcome you for the first time here at the annual meeting in Davos. Last April, you won the presidential elections in Ukraine in a staggering, with a staggering majority of 73 percent. I think this is a dream for any politician to have such a majority. Much emphasis and hope has been put into your government's ability to reform the Ukraine from within. You have let out your extensive ambitions to remake Ukraine into a dynamic market economy, free of corruption. At the same time, the Ukraine is faced with daunting challenges and as a president, you have already had to deal with uh, the political reality in your first months of office. We are now very eager to hear from you how you see the future of Ukraine. Welcome very much, Mr. President. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here the first time. Um, I'm the president of Ukraine, so I'll speak Ukrainian. Just to Mr. Dear Mr. Chairman, Professor Schwab, dear all, for me, it's extremely, really pleasant to be here at the 50s. Uh, session of the World Economic Forum, and uh, using this opportunity, I would like to note the projects of the Forum uh, for Ukraine, and namely scenarios of the future for Ukraine, Geneva Initiative for Ukraine, the new economic vision for Ukraine, and uh, I thank you for what has already been done, and I count on the further fruitful cooperation. The topics which are debated here in Davos uh, always uh, focus on the state of the modern world and uh, elucidate the challenges facing humanity. And this year, Forum united the leaders to discuss extremely important topic, the cohesive and sustainable world. Well, uh, you know, to my mind, uh, frankly spe speaking, Ukraine has what to say in this regard. What is the biggest threat to cohesive and sustainable world today? And this is security issue. Well, security for an individual as well as for many countries and all nations, the uh, present-day world is changing with reactive speed, which transferred us into a new epoch, the epoch of new normality. What yesterday seemed fantastic today has become a reality, but unfortunately, not everything is positive by far in this epoch. Trade wars, the redistribution, division of territories, the hike of military budgets, separatist movements, cancellation by countries of the previous international treaties. This is also, unfortunately, a new normality, and this undermines the credibility and trust of the mankind and make you think, well, uh, are we not going to the abyss? Is, it, is this world not going to the abyss? The risk that the forthcoming generation suffering from climate changes, permanent conflicts, poverty, the restricted access to food, will upbraid and rebuke every world leader that they really had chance to agree but have never made use of the chance. But the most horrible is that cataclysm have become a routine. Shocks have become habitual for the mankind. And, uh, well, I know for sure what I'm talking about is nobody else, because this is for the sixth year, there is 
war raging in my country. This is the sixth year as Russia annexed a portion of our territories despite thousands of pages of international law and hundreds of organizations that have the task to defend it. This is what we have, a new normality. Well, the world got united around tackling these issues, but is it enough for Ukrainians, those who got killed and those who lost their houses? Is it enough for them, the concern of the world? That's not enough. And that's true. This is just one of the examples which confirm that the present day architecture of the world is unfortunately vulnerable and the existing institutions do not always work as efficiently as the present day demands them to do. The world needs rethinking and renewing the rules, especially the rules of the international security. The world cannot be cohesive only in Facebook. When the address of Greta Thunberg is reposted, the photos of horrible fires in Australia, or, unfortunately, the downed Ukrainian airplane in Iran. Well, does it mean that everyone drew conclusions? No. Why? Because for the majority, in a week time, it will not be pressing anymore, and uh, there is a new, outstanding information news to be reported. There is a good reason why I pay so much attention at the Economic Forum to the security issue, because it is overriding for the development of the Ukrainian economy. At the same time, our philosophy is to remake our own problems into our strengths. The challenges facing us, Ukrainians, got us mobilized, make us move faster, inspire to make the impossible and improbable possible. We focus and program ourselves for positive thinking. We are committed to positive tasks. What do you think is the task for the country who lost a portion of its territory and is by far not the richest in the old continent? Well, I will tell you, to be the leader of the Eastern and Central Europe. These are ambitious plans. Do you think it is impossible? Many world unicorns started with crazy ideas, a couple of employees and offices in a garage. So, nothing is impossible. For these years, our countries made a couple of steps back, but we did not succumb. We took this distance for the run for a decisive economic leap. The new Ukrainian government make equal rules for all, clean the judiciary, digitalize processes, make possible vitally important reforms and laws. We have everything to become a successful country, favorable climate conditions, advantages very much, geographical location, untapped agricultural and industrial potential, and our most precious resource, unbelievably creative and very talented people. And uh, they are in top 50 according to the Human Capital Index rating. For now, we lack only two things. There is no other option but to be successful. This is the first one, and uh, we do not have sufficient investments. We propose to all of you to be the stakeholders and shareholders of the success of the new Ukraine today for the pragmatic and ossified world drastically once 
miracle and the world economy on the verge of the new global crisis needs economic miracle. Ukraine is the place where miracles come true. And my objective uh, that the manuals next to the case studies of Japan, South Korea and Singapore Ukraine would be written about. So please join in. Ukraine should become an investment mecca of Eastern and Central Europe. The main driver for economic development is an opportunity to get the profits, and we one of few countries who are now allowed to make such a high profit on investment capital. Today, we are under-invested and we are under-loved. But in contrast to the global trend, Ukraine accelerates the climate change. And I intentionally made this scandalous statement to focus your attention and so that everyone hear that. Of course, I'm talking only and exceptionally about the positive changes in business climate. Ukraine is getting stable and predictable market with significant opportunities for opening up and expanding your business. For us, this is the issue of personal survival, I would say, and for you, stability in the region and in Europe as a whole. What does it mean not to invest into Ukraine today? It means becoming George Bell, who back in 1999 refused to buy Kugel for 1 million US dollars. So, miss out Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, yeah. Zelensky, I, I would like uh, to, to express uh, the admiration for your courage, uh, which was certainly decisive to undertake substantial reforms already in, um, in Ukraine. Thank uh, you very much. It's a kind of jewel you, you presented to us for investments. My, my first question would be, what additional reforms um, are very important for you in the next future. Well, thank you for your question. Well, truly speaking, I have been working as a president for 248 days. Well, you understand how difficult this profession is because you know how many days I am in a position and starting from September, this was the beginning of the work for our parliament. And uh, on the average, in these four or five months, well, we have adopted, and I mean our new parliament, the Honor of Ukraine, we adopted such a big number of important laws which uh, could not be passed for different reasons, and it's not only about the president during many years. The laws which really improve the business climate for Ukraine, despite everything, well, we reformed all sectors, you know, we have a challenging situation with the land reform, reform but we voted this reform and we cancelled the moratorium on land sales in the first reading. This is one of the most difficult reforms reforms for the modern Ukraine. We voted concessions. And I can talk a lot about the laws that we have passed, and there is a, a lot of them still to come to regulation, and all these are important laws for every Ukrainian. And when I said about the number of days we have been working, on the average, daily, our new function in Parliament 
adopted one law a day. This is not about the number of the laws, it's about the number of challenges. And when I said that we voted the long concessions, this is not just to say that we passed bills or we worked. No. Well, we have the bids and we will have the concessions of the seaports, not in many years, but in the nearest days we will understand who won and the Western investor will come to Ukraine. We are making great strides and big changes in the law enforcement system. You may be aware of that we had a challenging reform for the relaunching of the General Prosecutor's Office. We did it, and we are about to launch the reform of the Security Service of Ukraine. We relaunched the anti-corruption court, and since September it has been working, and we are about to make reforms in the anti-corruption bureau. We have the objective that every day when you come home, you understand that it's not just that you worked this day as a president, because I would like to say that for 248 days I am a president, and all these days I have been working for Ukraine, and all these days I spent little time my family, because every day, being the president, I have to come up with some important outcome for Ukraine, just to explain my children why I'm not home. I think it's impressive how many reforms you enacted in such a short time. Um, let me switch to another issue. Um, you have an, uh, uh, an association agreement with the EU. And the EU actually has uh, committed to support Ukraine in ensuring a prosperous and a democratic future. What, what can uh, the EU, EU do? What is the importance? You are such a European country. So how do you see your future to the EU? Uh, my answer will be simple. First, we see our future in the European Union. What does the European Union have to do for Ukraine? Just to take Ukraine on board into the European Union is, are complicated things, but it seems to me it takes easy decisions. We signed the association agreement with the European Union, and we are on course to the European Union, but we have to come to understand that not only Ukraine should and wants to be in the European Union, and uh, many EU members support us and see us, our future, next to them in the European Union as an equitable partner, but some EU countries should want to take Ukraine on board to the European Union. This is a philosophical question. This is not about when we will be in the European Union, but what status Ukraine will be granted in the European Union. What will the attitude be to our country? The attitude as to the powerful player, the equal player, the country, which is respected, which is not looked down at. And it seems to me, uh, Mr. Schwab, uh, this is a very good moment when we know uh, it's one big country made an exit from the European Union, then maybe this is for Ukraine a time to enter. Mr. President, you, you talked about the uh, six years where we have uh, accepted vulnerability and a very, uh, let's say, also dangerous situation in your country as a new normal, as you expressed in your, in your speech. Um, you were meeting uh, Chancellor Merkel, <coughs> President Macron, and President Putin just beginning of December. Um, do you see any, I would say, light at the end of the tunnel? For sure, and thank you for this question. This is a very sensitive question, and for every Ukrainian, 
president. I will never become a president, run for the president, if it was not for my desire the most important objective to stop the war in the east of Ukraine. Yesterday we are at the economic forum, but we understand the economy is suffering because of the war in the east of Ukraine. Unfortunately, the main that we are losing the main potential. We have a talented people, courageous people, who now are at the forefront defending the sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country, losing them every day, their lives. We are losing our cold reserve. The potential of Ukraine regarding the Normandy format, well, I'm happy that thanks to the efforts of our team, after three years uh, when there was no meeting in the Normandy meeting and in December we met, I'm uh, grateful to our partners, Germany and France, that uh, they put their weight behind uh, this meeting and that we started to uh, resumed our talks uh, in the Normandy format with the Russian Federation and there are a couple of things we have agreed upon and in France I can frankly say as we discussed at the meeting, well, that's what really happened. There was the exchange. We caught back 75 Ukrainians from the territory, temporarily occupied territories. And that was very important. So far, and I underscore so far, we have not managed to ensure the complete ceasefire. And as I said previously, uh, we have not stopped losing the lives of Ukrainians. Uh, but I say so far, because I truly believe, and as you said, Mr. Schwab, I believe in the light in the end of the tunnel. Well, I do not want to, s to believe that this is the light in the end of the tunnel. I just want to see the big light ahead. And I'm sure that if all stakeholders, all sides, want to stop the war, it will be stopped tomorrow. Because Ukraine is defending its territory, its land, but in our mind we are aware that we are ready to stop it today. It's a tragedy still to see a war in, in happening in Europe. Mr. President, you, you uh, emphasize the importance of foreign investment in your country. Um, you have foreign investors here or um, very powerful investors. What would be the three key arguments? You mentioned some in your speech, but if you had to summarize, what are the three specific strengths that uh, Ukraine is offering uh, to a foreign um, business investor? Well, thank you for your question, and uh, I believe that we have more than three strengths and examples. Uh, there are things that we are ready to discuss with really powerful Western investors. Not just warm words, please come and we will defend your investment. We prepared the program which is called Investment Nanny. For each investor, big company who will bring 100 million US dollars plus we will conclude a separate contract with the state. It will be the state who will defend you. It will be the manager, Nanny, speaking five languages and available 24-7. With you, any question, any problem, you will be in direct touch with the manager and there will be no problem whatsoever. Secondly, for all investors, who are ready to join the large-scale privatization. I have not mentioned it yet, and we are preparing large-scale privatization in the beginning of spring. For today, it will be 500 enterprises ready for to be privatized. Please come. For the first two years, all investors who will 
participate in privatization turn million US dollars plus we will ensure the tax break, tax holidays. You will not pay the corporate income tax for five years. Please welcome. As I said, well, land reform, concessions to regulation, we really have uh, a slew of pills in the pipeline that I'm ready to discuss with you for hours. It's profitable, really, and advantages to invest money in Ukraine. We have talented. And I don't want to call Ukrainians cheap, but talented, cheap experts, please. Mr. President, please. Thank you for your first visit in Davos, and uh, we hope we can uh, welcome you back in the coming years. And every year, we hope to hear from you a success story. And uh, certainly, we will support you in all your reform efforts, and um, we wish you all the best for the democratic and uh, uh, I would say, very fast development of the potential which you really have with your human resources, but also with your central, as you mentioned, with your location as a key country in the central and east of Europe. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much.